Hello fishing friends, this is Matthew with Out Fishing 13 bringing you another real service and repair video. Today I'm bringing you a repair video for a vintage Johnson 100A fishing reel. This is the smaller model and it's in good shape but it's very dirty, very old and hasn't probably ever been serviced in years and years and years. So I'm going to show you how to service this. So let's get started. Just like any of my other service videos, if you haven't seen them, you only need a few tools to really service um, some of these reels. You'll need a pair of pliers, a screwdriver, maybe a Phillips and a flat screwdriver, perhaps a small screwdriver. You may need a little screwdriver. You need some sort of brush like this to brush everything off. And I like to use WD-40 to help cut the old grease and get things cleaned up. You can use soap and water. That also works really well and let it dry out completely. You need some rags and a clean space to work in. You'll also need some good quality reel lube. And this year I'm using some Lucas fishing reel oil and some pin uh, precision reel grease. I also have some Lucas Red Grease, and this is called Red and Tacky, and it works really good too. I also have a lighter weight grease that I, that's called Triflow Grease. Um, I don't have any much more of this, and it also helps to have a small brush like this as an applicator to apply your grease. Okay, these reels, are, I've serviced a lot of Zebco reels on my, my channel. These reels are very similar. Um, they, this particular model was probably made back in the 1960s and they were pretty popular reels with a lot of guys. They're pretty well built. They're about made out of aluminum with some plastic parts. But some guys really collect these, like to collect these. Now, the biggest problem I see with this reel is it was laid around in, in the boat quite a bit. And so it's got a lot of what I would call boat rash, where it's just, um, hadn't been taken really well care of and so it has lots of scratches and stuff on it but let's take it apart and get started on it and you begin by taking the front off okay this is the spinner cone assembly and we need to take this nut off here it's already a little bit loose so I'm just gonna loosen that up and set it aside let's take this off this has what I call a D hole and a D pin here that's shaped like a D and it, that'll go on like that but looking at this this is kind of dirty we need to clean this up but this is operating really well so on this Johnson reel what we have when, when we take this off here is you'll see a couple things here one you see this white spacer here this is actually the drag washer this is the spool and I can see that it's been worn pretty well the clicker is actually on the underside and this is made so that you could actually take it off and turn it around as that this drag right here um, wore out you could turn it around and that's maybe what they did at some point in time but maybe not but this should just come off it should spin on there and this doesn't spin this aluminum part here should spin but it doesn't it's just super tight on there and and it should come off and even after I put lubrication I can't get it off one of the things that you want to do is you want to loosen this all the way that you can and see if it'll come off it still won't so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, these panels off here and the handle off and the, the button off so that we can take and disassemble this. The way that this, this actually is kind of a clever um, uh, device here so if you're, as your drag wore out and say you had it all over, all the way tight over here and it wasn't tightening it enough, what you could do is you could take and lift this up, lift this little handle up with the screwdriver and then it's got a little hollow spot underneath there and you could actually take and tighten it down or you could loosen it up. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this apart, pull this handle up, loosen this all the way, and take the drag assembly apart. So let's take this apart here. So it just has two screws to take this panel off and this cover off. And take this cover off here. And then when you take this off here, looks like that. And then you can take the button out and you can see it's pretty dry and crusty in there. All the oil and grease has basically got dried and crusty and dusty. Okay, we can take this part out and you just pull on this and, and then turn it and slip it out. Okay, and then right here is, is the drag. This is what engages the drag. And, and what happens is this as you screw it in it pushes down on that, which pushes up on this little this little slit there and tightens it up. So what we want to do is we want to make sure it's all the way loose, and it is. And uh, we want to take this apart and service it. So we're going to take and slip a screwdriver, lift it up, and slip a screwdriver underneath there and pry it up. And then take another screwdriver and start loosening this up. Maybe we need to go a little bit farther. Once we got that far, then we can just loosen it up the rest of the way. Take that out, and you see how crusty this is. This needs to be cleaned up. And then, that's loosened up all the way. Let's see, my wheel is still really tight, and I just don't understand why. The only way I'm gonna be able to get this apart is get a big pair of pliers on there. I don't wanna pry up on there, because this aluminum may tend to break. So I need to take and, and wiggle it back and forth um, somehow and to take it off so I got a big pair of channel locks I'm gonna just gently just gently grab a hold of this and wiggle it and take it off that shaft right on there and it shouldn't be that tight I mean this should be able to spin on there like that but it's not um, I think it's because there must be quite a bit of corrosion. Here's the little clicker. We'll just take that off. And then that right there is the drag lever that pushes up inside here to tighten things up. Okay. It still looks like it's in good shape, but for some reason when we put everything back together, it just really tightens up. Now you can see it's pretty dirty. That's the frame right there. First thing we want to do, I want to do is I want to take and clean this all up. I want to take some really fine sandpaper and go over this spool right here and sand any of the corrosion off of there. And then to take this apart, we need to take this apart. And what this has in here is down in here it has a stainless steel snap ring that's got um and we can so we can push this out. So what we can do is we can push it out. Um, this way just like this and you can see it's got a little stainless steel snap ring that fits in that groove there one of the things that is missing on this is it should have a little keeper um, that that snaps onto there and keeps it there it's not an um, earring it's a long little snap thing like that and I'm gonna have to hunt around and see if I can find one to uh, make sure that's all fixed. But I'm gonna go ahead and clean this all up. And we got the handle here. Let's take the handle off. Let me get a little a nut driver. Take that off. Take that 
hand law. Okay, we're gonna take this out. Let's be really careful as we do. Oh, look how gunky that is. Okay, I'm gonna get this all cleaned up so we can reassemble it. So I'll be back when I get that done. All right, all the parts are cleaned and dried out, and so we're ready to start putting the reel back together. <clears throat> and we'll put it back together in reverse order. Now, the only thing that I'm currently missing on this reel that it didn't have is a little retaining clip that goes right on this um, little nose here. And I started looking around to see if I could find a part and I did find the picture. And it's just a little, um, looks like a brass um, keeper that slits in, slips in there and slips around there and it's got a little spring and it pushes up against there. Um, and I just don't have anything to make one, but we'll put it back together and, and uh, it may or may not work correctly without that little spring clip. So this right here is the drag system and it snaps into the spool. So what we want to do here is make sure we lubricate inside this spool. And then we'll snap this in here and it goes in this direction here and you just kind of got to get those little that little spring clip worked in there and then it should just snap in there like that now that's all lubricated we want to put a little bit of lubrication on here although it doesn't really move but what it will do is prevent corrosion and what I had to do on this here was sand this down to remove the corrosion that had built up on here. Okay, and then the spool, we need to, the, the next thing we need to do is we need to take and put this little, this little clicker piece in here. This clicks against there. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on here and on this spool shaft just for protection. Okay, what we have to do is put this on here, right in that position, and then this little drag lever adjuster in there like so. Okay, now we can put the spool on. And it should fit on there nice and smoothly, just like that. And hopefully, it will work properly. And it seems like it's going to work okay. okay. All right, now that I have that on there, I can put on Need to put this on here and then I want to add a little bit of grease to the threads here and this is the little screw that adjusts the drag so what you have to do is you have to get it started on in here And you can screw it all the way down once you get it so far where it's going in there like that then you have to use another screwdriver to lift it up because there's a spring in there you lift it up kind of hold it in place and then finish screwing this down It was a pretty primitive drag system. It was not what I would consider a very good drag system. 
but it worked. I'm not going to worry about adjusting it because But it does work, as you can see. The next thing we need to do is put in this main um, pinion shaft. Now this is not really what I would consider a true pinion gear. It's a spur gear, it's a beveled spur gear. So we'll put some grease on the shaft here. And you have to sort of fit this in here first, like so, and then slide it in place. Okay, we want to add a drip of oil to this shaft right here, where this pushes in like so. Then we can put this on here. Well. Here's what we're going to do here. We need to put this all together. So here's the main, main handle gear. I'll put some grease on there. Now one of the things I noticed on this, I had to make a little modification, is the gear was not engaging. So I, I took a little small brass washer it was actually a grommet and I flattened it down and cut it to the right size and I made it so that this would close the gear lash so that will work better put that in there okay we're gonna lube this up and lube these this gear here you don't need a whole lot And when I turn the handle, that will lube the other gear that's in there. Okay. I'm going to put some oil down. This is These are the anti-reverse levers. Okay, then we can put this in here and get that handle lined up. All right, then we can put this on this side. Put our screws in. Okay, we'll put the handle on. And the handle nut. And there it's cranking good. Okay. And the drag works. Okay, we're just going to have to put this on without any sort of retaining clip because we just we don't have it you know I wish I did but I don't so the next thing is I need to take and lubricate up this a little bit and I'm gonna put some lubrication on here and then I'm gonna put a little bit of oil right here where this slides back and forth bit of lube on there that's really all okay and then I'm gonna put some lube right around here put this back on
tighten this down. Okay. Pocket. And everything seems to be working fine. The, the pickup pin engages and it stays in and comes out. So when the drag works, it's kind of jumpy though. And we'll put the cap back on. Okay, there you go. That's a little Johnson, the little Johnson model 100A. If you happen to have one of those extra clips, let me know and comment below. And comment below on any of uh, what you think. This is the first Johnson reel I've ever worked on. And it's a pretty interesting design. I can see that it's a pretty durable design. Um, and pretty old-fashioned. I'm not really fond of the the drag system Although it's it's functional and it works much better now the anti-reverse is kind of odd um, What's interesting about this is you could actually take and turn this over and Spool it differently and use the anti-reverse here and actually use this rod underneath like that and reel the other way so that was kind of neat if you wanted to have an under, you know, an underhand reel if you wanted to, to do something or if you wanted to spin it this way instead of this way. So it was completely reversible from what I could see. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's a very heavy duty um, reel. Um, it's functional and after probably 60 years, it's still working. Um, it's missing that one part, but other than that, it's a pretty neat old reel. Alright, thanks guys for watching, and have a great day. Bye.